Tipama afterward. Since Tipama's death, in moments of great difficulty or great inspiration, I thought of her or evoked her image and felt profoundly touched. Tipama lived the life of the Dharma, which meant she paid attention and brought metta to whatever she did. Her presence was that of being respectful for everything. Her teaching was to always keep people in your heart. When I am not living fully from body, mind, and heart, her grandmotherly questions arise. Can you live so that everything you do is blessed? Every joy, every sorrow, every person? Have you let yourself look deeply into what's true? In addition to Dipama's inspiration is the power of her being one of our ancestors. In the same way that Ajahn Chah is a Buddhist ancestor for me, and his teacher Ajahn Mun is an ancestor, and the Buddha is also an ancestor. Buddhists often evoke the spirit of the Buddha and ask him to teach or guide them. Even the ones who intellectually would say, well, the Buddha was finished with all his births. In this way, you can call upon Dipama as an ancestor through evoking her image or feeling. Saintly beings, whether they are the Dalai Lama, Mother Teresa, Dipama, or a thousand unknown saintly beings living amongst us, share the same fundamental characteristics of selflessness, great compassion, and peace. Each one of us can carry Dipama's legacy in terms of having that much peace and love. It takes its own time, yet it's possible for anyone. In the end, the point is not to be like Dipama or some other great yogi or saint you might read about. The point is something much more difficult, to be yourself, and to discover that all you seek is to be found, here and now, in your own heart. By Jack Cornfield. End of afterward.